All right, your dogs, welcome back to another video. So I just wanna update you guys with the K20 engine swap that I'm doing. So if you guys watched my last video, you guys would have seen me and Shimin putting the K20 engine into my DC2. So as I stated in the last video, that was just temporary. We were only gonna put the engine in just to test fit it, and then we're gonna take it out and paint everything. So in the past week or so, I've just been collecting parts for the DC2 as well as taking the engine back out of the car. So as you can see here, the engine is no longer inside the DC2. They're the holes that we drilled for the engine mount in the last video. And as you can see, I've taken the Chase Bay's Wheelwood brake booster out and I've just put the standard brake booster back in. So this is because I'm gonna be daily driving the car and I do like my brakes to be very comfy and not very hard. So I've taken the brake booster out. This is the one that we had in the car before and it looks really nice, but the brake pedal was just too hard. So we've taken that out. So now that that's all out of the way, I wanna show you guys what the engine looks like now. And I wanna try and get the engine painted by the end of tonight. So this is the engine now. So I have been doing a bit of work on it over the week. So last time you guys saw it, it was probably all assembled and it was a lot more dirtier. So I have cleaned it a little bit and I've taken a few things off. So the main things I've taken off was the intake manifold, I've taken off the water pump housing, I've taken all the pulleys and everything off. I've also taken the starter motor out and everything's on the floor there. So while all the accessories of the motor are disassembled, I do wanna paint everything. So that's basically what we're gonna be doing today. And I also do wanna paint the actual engine itself. If you guys haven't noticed, it's no longer sitting on the engine crane, it's on this little trolley and it actually balances without this strap but i put this strap on just in case because when i'm rolling it around i don't want it to like tip over or anything but this engine little trolley has been the best thing ever because i was so sick of bending over on the floor and like trying to work on it in the corner of the garage so now i can just roll it around wherever and i probably will end up painting it on this trolley because it's just so practical also i don't know if you guys have noticed but we've actually got a fridge in the garage now and I got this fridge off my girlfriend's uncle. So shout out to Aggie for hooking this fridge up. There it is, the garage fridge. So inside the fridge, it's a little bit low on stock because everyone's been a fat fuck and raiding the fridge, especially the up and goes. But this thing's sick. Also, I need recommendations on what to put in the bottom drawer. I don't have anything in there yet. So comment down below what you guys think we should put in the bottom drawer. All right, one more thing before we start getting into painting the engine. I just wanna show you guys all the fittings and hoses that I've gotten for my brake booster, my brake line tuck, and my radiator setup. Would you believe me if I told you that this is $1,000 worth of fittings and hoses? Like how the fuck is this $1,000? Just one of these is $70. So yeah, these are expensive. These swivels are expensive. The hoses are expensive too. Like everything's just fucking expensive. So basically what I'm doing with the Dash 16 is all for the radiator, so I'm running all braided hoses for the radiator. So obviously most cars run normal silicon hoses for their radiator setup. I'm gonna be running braided hose so it looks a little, a little bit nicer. And instead of having clamps, it's all fittings and screws. So you just know that it's never gonna leak and it's never gonna just pop off or anything. And for all my brake booster hoses and just like normal vacuum hoses, I'm using all fittings and hoses. So a normal brake booster hose is just like a normal rubber hose and like this is what it is. One of these rubber hoses with a clamp and it usually just looks like that. That's not being used at all. Instead, we're gonna be using all braided hoses with all AN fittings. So that's what all of these are for. So I've got um, swivel 90 degrees, I've got straight, I've got just 90 degrees. And then these are the hoses I've got. So we've got dash six hose, we've got dash 16 hose, and then we've got dash three hose. And the, the dash three fittings and hoses are all for my brake tuck. So if you guys are familiar with Hondas, um, all their brake lines are on the firewall and it looks like spaghetti. It literally looks like someone got a fucking bowl of spaghetti and just threw it onto the firewall because all the hoses just go like that and they're just fucking everywhere. So this is what I've decided. So my master cylinder sits here. So I've got two hoses that will come out from there and I'm gonna put 90 degrees down. And then I'm basically just gonna run another 90 there and drill a hole in the firewall underneath my clutch slave cylinder and then i'm gonna run all of my hoses behind the dash so you can't see anything on the firewall all right for real though i keep talking too much shit. i need to start getting this engine prepped and painted so let's do this there's a lot of little areas where i can't really get into like areas like that but i'm not too fussed about that because at the end of the day it's just an engine this is just to refresh it a little bit and i think 
that's clean enough. That's standard enough for me. Looks a lot better than what it did before, but it'll look even better once we put a coat of paint on it. Just before I paint this intake manifold, I'm gonna quickly shave these fins off because they look ugly as fuck. I don't know what they're there for, but they gotta go. So I'm gonna cut them off, smooth it out, and then um, yeah, should be good to paint. All right guys, so it's actually the next day. So I did get the engine all sanded last night and everything's pretty much ready to paint now. I was starting to shave the little fins on the intake manifold. So this is it here. Um, but while I was grinding it down and getting it ready to smoothen that out, um, I had to go pick up these little taps from my cousin. This is a 1 8 NPT tap and then I've got a 1 quarter NPT tap. So these are so I can run these Aeroflow fittings because these are American threads, um, they're NPT threads. Um, and I wanna drill these out. So I'm gonna drill this out, tap it. I've already tested it on a piece of metal so I know that it's gonna work. All right, so we're gonna drill the hole out for the tap now. So I've got an 11 millimeter bit. So this is the sizes that you need. So for a 1 8 NPT, you need to drill 8.4. Drilling to 8.5 is fine. Um, and for a one quarter NPT, you drill to 11 millimeters. So I'm doing a one quarter NPT, so I'm gonna drill to 11 millimeters. So now that this hole has been drilled out to 11 millimeters, um, we can get the tap now. So basically what this tap does, it allows you to put a bolt or a thread or a fitting or something into like a normal hole. So obviously we just drilled it out so there's no thread on it. So this makes a thread. So this is basically a thread maker. So we're gonna put it like that and then it comes with like this little handle. So you just get the handle and you just twist it on and that's it, basically makes a thread. So when I do this, I usually just put some WD-40 on there just to lube it up a little bit. The WD-40 also helps the metal shaving stick to the actual tap rather than falling down into the hole. Whatever you do, try and make sure that you're doing this straight because you don't want your fitting to go in crooked. So what I usually do is I probably do like one full turn and then I do half a turn back. And what that does, it breaks off the little metal shavings for the thread. And you can hear the threads snap off when you do the half turn back as well. Maybe if I shut the fuck up, you guys will be able to hear it. All right guys, so as you can see, the hole is now tapped and it's got a thread in it. So now's the moment of truth and see if this bad boy fits inside. So when you screw this in, it should go in with no worries. It should just go in smoothly like that. As you can see, I'm not trying to force it. Um, if you do try to force it, it's probably gonna ruin the thread. So yeah, that's basically it. It's just gonna shoot up like that. And that's it. So basically from here, I'm gonna have another hose with a braided, like another braided hose with a fitting. It's gonna screw onto here and it's gonna go around to the brake booster and then I'm gonna put another hole and another fitting on that as well. And that's basically it, it's as simple as that. All right guys, so I spent the past hour masking up all the little sensors and all the holes and all the gaps and shit. And this is basically where I'm up to now. So that's the intake manifold. So that's the hole that we tapped earlier and they're the fins that we shaved earlier and everything's masked up. Don't forget to put a bit of tape or paper or something inside where the injectors go so you don't get pain in there. Um, yeah, the engine's all masked up. All the little coolant outlets and all that shit's all done. All the sensors and plugs and everything, they're all taped up. And then this is just the little parts like the alternator, the starter motor and all that little shit. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So now I'm just gonna apply some etch primer and then I can basically just paint straight over that. So I don't wanna waste any time. I wanna get straight into it, so let's go. So this is the etch primer that we're using. It's Pro XL Ultra Etch. And the paint we're using is just fine silver. That's the paint code in case you guys wanna paint your car, your engine this color. So let's do this. It looks pretty good. I'm very happy with the masking job that I did. Um, yeah, the paint gets in every little gap and shit, so it actually looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Um, this is 
this is what it's gonna look like once it's painted anyways because it's gonna be painted silver so it looks very similar to this just gonna be more shiny and shit so that's just the first coat i'm gonna do one more coat and then straight on to paint all right so it's time to use this bad boy this is the color we're going to be using for the engine and all the parts it's basically like a plain silver i didn't want to make it look too extra so try to keep it as simple as possible so it's literally just a simple silver all right and the spray gun we're going to be using today is the devilbus gti pro this thing's a fucking beast i love this thing all right so because this is two to one so you put two parts of paint one part of hardener so that's it and then you put 10 percent paint dinners to thin the paint out so just a tiny bit yep and that's it and that's your paint All right guys, so the engine's finally painted and everything's done now. Um, this is how everything turned out. All right, so this is the engine. Turned out absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, couldn't, I honestly couldn't be happy with this. From what it was to how it looks now, it looks really fucking good. And yeah, all the little parts came out good too. And I'm so keen to put everything together. Obviously, I gotta wait for everything to dry and it's gonna take at least a day. So yeah, that's gonna end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and also turn your post notifications on so you guys are notified when I post a video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Now fuck off. <laughs>